All right, so you guys can see the title of my talk. Um, and the research project is uh, in, done with my colleagues, Stefan Dickert and Paul Slovic. And as you can see from the title, we're basically going to be looking at the effects of increasing choice uh, and increasing information on decisions to donate. So what motivates charitable giving? So this may be something that we're all pretty much interested in. And as psychologists, what we primarily focused on is the cognitive and effective measures. So we looked at things like sympathy, the perceived impact of making a donation, how much that donation is going to make us feel better as a person. But it's also important to look at things like uh, how the structure of the request is made. So is the target of the donation going to be an individual, or is it going to be a program? Are you going to provide me some details about who I'm going to donate to, or are you not? Are you going to give me some choice of who I'm going to donate to, or are you just going to show me a picture of one child and say, would you like to donate to them or not? Um, and in terms of the decision environment, when we're talking about details, there's kind of some mixed results. So some people say that adding details uh, is going to increase the likelihood of donating and the amount that you donate when you talk about individuals and programs. However, there's also some uh, research that shows that individuals are less likely to donate uh, to individual targets if statistical information is provided. Okay? So what we wanted to do in our first study is kind of clarify when providing details might help and when they might hurt. So in our first study, what we did is we paid participants to go through a number of tasks. And the reason we paid them uh, to do the task as opposed to just performing an experiment is because I think it's kind of an odd way to uh, look at donations. If you say, here's five bucks, would you like to donate some of that money back to this kid? So at least this way, they actually had to work for what they got. And therefore, uh, the donation that they make is actually affecting uh, the money that they got. So they actually had to earn it. Okay. Um, and then they were put into one of six conditions. Um, in each of these conditions, we showed a picture of a child or a picture of a program, the name of the child and the name of the program. Uh, these children, or the picture of the child and the picture of the program, were the ones that rated highest in a pilot study. So we had about 100 pictures of different children that we got from charitable organizations. The one that scored the highest on everything is the one we used here. Same with the program. And for the program, it ended up being starvation prevention was the one that everybody found to be the most important thing to take care of. So they either saw just the picture of the child or the program and its name. Then we asked them the normal stuff, like how much sympathy do you have for this child or the people that the program's going to help, need the impact of your donation, how much you would feel better. In the next condition, same thing, except we added some details. So we said the program or the child is located in northwestern Chad, um, their family's poor, the risk of starvation is high if they don't get a donation or if the program isn't funded. And in our final condition, the exact same thing, except we added some details. So we gave the overall population of northwestern Chad, the likelihood that somebody is in poverty in Chad, the likelihood that they're malnourished, uh, and uh, the average life expectancy. Then. We said, now the experiment's over, would you like to donate? And so individuals who said they wanted to donate then went on to the next stage and they said how much they wanted to donate out of their total earnings. And I know I'm going pretty fast, so if you have any questions, let me know. Um, so here's the proportion of people donating in each of those conditions. So one of the first things you'll see is that uh, the child was more likely to elicit a donation than a program was. And that's statistically significant. But you also see that there's an interaction here. So basically what's happening is if the donation request was for a program, increase in the amount of details led to increases in the likelihood to actually make a donation. Whereas if it was for an individual child, it led to decreases. So, yeah. Um, so you may think, okay, so that's one thing, but how much actually ended up being donated, right? So here is on average what was donated for the kids in the programs, and this is for all participants. So if somebody said they didn't want to donate, we just entered a zero here. Um, you can again see that the kid is getting more donations on average than the program is, and you can also see that there's a significant interaction there. Uh, that interaction is primarily driven by the fact that for kids, it doesn't seem to make a difference if there's information given or not, whereas for programs, it leads to a steady increase. just one kid and uh, the program is just the picture of, I think it was like bags of food. And it said starvation prevention. So, okay, so maybe you don't care about the overall donation. Maybe we only care about those people who then went on to donate, right? So that's what we find there. Again, 
kids are more likely to receive a larger donation than our programs. Uh, but the interaction is gone now and it's replaced by a main effect. So what ends up happening is if you decide to donate, any details added on seem to have a positive effect for both groups. So if you have more details once you decide to donate, then you donate more than if there was less details. Uh, it's a stronger effect for the kids than it is for the programs, but it's both there and significant. All right, so what did we learn from study one? Well, kids overall are going to elicit a greater likelihood of a donation being made uh, and a greater donation on average when a donation is made. In terms of the effects of adding information, they're mixed. So basically, if it's a program that we're talking about, adding details does help increase the likelihood that somebody's going to donate. Whereas if it's a kid we're talking about, it actually decreases the likelihood that somebody's going to donate. So this kind of goes against some of the research that's been published previously. Then when we talk about adding details in terms of those who end up donating, it helps for both, right? So it increases the amount that's given for kids and it increases the amount that's given for programs, although it's stronger for kids. So then maybe what's the take home here if you're a practitioner trying to get people to give money for something? Maybe, this is my take on it anyways, if you're asking for an individual kid, maybe just show a picture of the kid, right? Let the participant or whoever the donor is make up their mind about why the kid needs money. Then once you've got them into the position where they want to donate, then hit them with the details, <laughs> okay? And then maybe that's going to boost up their donations. Where if you're talking about a program, give them details all the way through. And the more details you give them, probably the better. And that's going to increase the likelihood that they're going to donate and that they're going to donate more when they do donate. No, they're at the same time. So that, that, so which makes it harder to know if they had already made their decision? To donate or not? By the time they got... Right? Well, they didn't know if we were going to ask them because that was on the next slide. Right, so in the first one it says, here's the picture and then either information or no information and then the ratings, sympathy, need, impact. Then on the next screen we say, hey, the experiment's over. Would you like to donate some of your earnings to the kid you just saw or the program you just saw? Lord? Okay. Yeah. But it's not just the statistics, even if we just add descriptive information about where the kid's from, that's hurting. So I think what's going on is if you just have a picture of a kid and the kid looks like he's starving, I can make up my own narrative of what's going on. Once you actually start giving me details about it, that kind of ruins my imagination about what's going on. Whereas with the program, I want to know what this program's actually going to do, where it's located, I want some details. So I think that's the distinction. I don't think it's a system one, system two kind of thing. But I could be wrong. Yeah. That would make sense, but also we see the decrease just saying the kids from Northwestern Chad. <laughs> so if it was just statistics, then maybe, but if the overall effect is negative for information, I don't know if that would necessarily flow. Maybe it could switch you into thinking about it more, which could lead you to more analytics, but it's hard to know for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, but I mean, then the point would be that any information is basically going to start ticking away at that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, the, like I said, I think we had 100 and something pictures that we piloted with about 400 people. And this is the kid that maxed out on everything. So cuteness, sympathy, need, everything you can think of, this was the kid that was going to get it. I've run studies on...
yeah. Yeah, so I've ran studies with disgust, and actually, I don't have any of that data here, obviously, but disgust actually is a better motivator than sadness, at least in the work that I have. So I should go, though. Um, so in addition to thinking about the decision request or the donation request in terms of the details provided, you can also think, how many options are there for me to donate to? So again, research is mixed here. For individuals, um, the general consensus is that adding options decreases the underlying motivators for donating. Uh, and in turn, you get less of a donation. However, when we talk about programs, um, it's been found to increase it. So you give me a bunch of different options of programs I can choose between, I'm more likely to find one that I identify with or that I care about, therefore I'm more likely to donate. So again, we kind of just want to see which one of these um, is actually happening and the degree to which it happens as you add more and more options. So the design of study two is basically the exact same as study one. It's still going. We're trying to get to 1,000 here. Um, and so again, participants went through a number of tasks. They earned some money. Uh, then we said, hey, study's over. But if you'd like, you can donate. Uh, and the donation request here, um, we took from the top 16 kids and the top 16 programs from our pilot study. Um, in one condition, you were just shown either a kid or the program and the name of the kid and the name of the program. Do you want to donate to this kid or this program? or you're given a choice between two, four, eight, or 16 different options. So you'd see 16 different kids in their names or 16 different programs in their names. Uh, and then again, for those individuals who wanted to donate, we asked them the standard stuff, sympathy, need, impact, how good would you feel if you donated, and of course, how much would you like to give? So, on to the results. The only effect is that kids are more likely to receive a donation than programs. There's absolutely no effective increase in the number of options uh, on the likelihood of donating, either for kids or for programs. Flatlines. So what about how much is donated? Absolutely nothing. Uh, this is uh, overall participants, uh, and this is for only givers. That spike is kind of not real. Uh, it's about two participants who donated all their earnings in that condition, but once I do some skew correction, it washes out, so it's all flat. So what's the take home from study two? Well, we at least replicate the effect uh, that if you have a kid versus a program, you're more likely to get somebody to donate. But other than that, there's nothing. So this goes against pretty much all the research that has been done on this, and I honestly think this is more realistic than what's been done in the psychology field before. Because previously, normally, it's like, here, have some money. Now, give me some more back. Here, they actually had to work for it. Uh, these weren't college students. This is all done on MTurk, so we have a huge age range. We have a huge uh, range of education. We have a huge range of how much money these people are earning, because some people on MTurk just do it for a hobby on the side, right? So I think if you're going to give people a donation request, just put your best foot forward. Like, this is the kid, right? This is the kid that we want you to donate to. Just use that kid, because you're probably more likely to get somebody to donate than if you give them a whole bunch of kids to choose from. I also think it would be the same for programs. Find the program that people care about, just ask about that program. Like, there's no reason to give them a variety of options to choose from if it's not going to help you. So, what's next for us in this project? Uh, the next thing we want to do is combine these two lines of study, basically. Uh, so, increase the level of detail and in increase the level of options to choose from and see if there might be some kind of synergistic effect. So maybe if you have two options and there's details, maybe that's when you get the sweet spot of this is where everybody donates kind of thing. Um, it's also worth mentioning we have all these other measures. So we have social value orientation, working memory, attentional filtering capacity, emotional intelligence, on and on and on. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at those yet, but it could be that maybe different individuals are affected differently by the amount of information that's provided or the number of options. And in our final study in this project, what we're going to do is try to move this to the real world. So what we want to do is take a charitable organization's normal flyer that they send out and tweak it so it fits with the results that we found in our study, send it out, and see if that increases the level of response they get and the amount of donations they have. And that is all I got. Of the one kid. You know, and actually you're walking through the disease process of this child for their cancer program. So it'd be interesting to see what kind of 
kind of results they're getting from using That was Riley Childers. Riley Childers. Yeah, that actually makes sense because then it would be like this is a kid, you make that initial decision so to donate have, and we keep some rationale for choosing that particular fund. As opposed to, yeah. Opposed to the many children that they have at the hospital. Yeah. And then following that child's donation that's there. That's interesting. Yeah. Or the children's miracle network telephone has, you know, each segment they show children and then you could find out how many donations and then maybe just use the one, yeah. Yeah, because they don't just use one. They use multiple, multiple throughout. Throughout the 24-hour period. Okay. Any other questions? How does this relate to the baby juice stuff that was discussed this morning? I wasn't here this morning, but. Um, um, the, I'm, I'm a practitioner, not yeah. a researcher, so I'm probably going to push this. But I think the, the outcome was that giving major donors sense that they had some direction where the donation was going. Didn't increase the likelihood that they would give, but increase their donation amount. Okay. So I mean then it might be the same kind of story that I was telling earlier. You should first get them to donate, like make that decision. And then once you've got them over that first hurdle, then hit them up with the details that would kind of push them towards it. So I guess it could fit with that as well. So if you can get them over that first initial hurdle of I'm going to donate or I'm not, then you might be able to ramp up their likelihood of donating by letting them have a little bit of direction of how that's going to happen. But the, the second study uh, gives a, gave, cho gave choice? Yes. And so that you said it had no effect? Yeah, zero. Remember that it was limited to either the top 1% or 5% of the population of probably wasn't in the sample. Yeah. Yeah, so my sample is probably the lower earners in society.